Hello, I'm Justin Wolf, the product manager for Starlight here at FuturePoint Systems. With the release of Starlight 413 comes quite a few new features that our user community has been asking for over the last few months. Here's a summary of what's new. Better performance for importing documents, and in the Knowledge Manager, Starlight's link charting feature. A new light edition, Starlight LE, has many of the most popular Starlight Viz features, but at a much reduced price, enabling everyone on a team to start analyzing their information with Starlight. Scripting is supported both within Viz for automating repetitive analysis tasks and within Starlight Data Engineer, the replacement for the XML engineering environment for fine-grained control of data processing. An easy mechanism for filtering out small groups in the category view and small networks in the network view. Stereo 3D for our users with goggles or stereographic displays. The Knowledge Manager also contains several new improvements such as data-driven edge annotation, web reports, spreadsheet output for import into other link charting tools, and workflow improvements. Starlight Data Engineer, or SDE, replaces XEE and has many new features as well. These include a high-speed list-based entity extractor called the Large List Extractor. This module scales extremely well to support very large lists. Extraction tasks that would otherwise take weeks or months now take just minutes. An improved database connector allows for custom query dialogs. New run modes that allow you to run any processor continuously on an interval or at a specified time each day. And a module filter to help you find modules quickly during processor construction. Lastly, we have completely rewritten our licensing system to make this process much easier to use and to support a new licensing model. Floating licenses allow groups to share a license among any number of users. As soon as one person exits an application, the license is immediately available for someone else. So let's start the demo. I have an empty project in Viz, and I'll grab some data from the database. By clicking on the NTSB Query button, I'm activating an import plugin that uses SDE's ODBC module to connect to databases. The query dialog you see is based on the SQL query being sent to the database, which I'll show in more detail in a few minutes. For now, I'll just ask for the last one year of accident reports from the NTSB database. Though this data is stored locally in a Microsoft Access database, SDE can also connect to Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, SQLite, or other databases supporting ODBC connectivity. Now I've got a little over 1,000 records from the database, which only took a few seconds. Since I've embedded a record type into the plugin, you can see that the query also added the record type and semantic maps into the project. To demonstrate how scripting in Viz can automate repetitive analysis tasks, I'll just click on the query results and click Execute Script. I've already built up a script called Accident Report that will execute a few drill down queries and build a number of views based on the results I got back from the database. You can see that Viz has built two subsets of data, one for Cessna and one for Piper, and then made several views. This sort of script is useful when you have the same type of data collected periodically over time and want to see the same visualizations each time you analyze it. We can add color encoding here to help identify serious accidents with a significant loss of life. I'll make an encoding showing 1 to 5 fatalities in blue, 5 to 30 in yellow, and 30 or more in red. Accidents without any loss of life are now shown in gray. While we have these views up, let me show you one of the other features we've added. In the category view, you can tell Viz to hide the groups with fewer than a certain number of features in them. To show how this works, I'll hide all the groups with only one or two accidents in them. This has cleaned up the view quite a bit, and now it shows only the makes with three or more accidents in this reporting period. This threshold functionality is also available in the network view to hide small networks that aren't interesting. Next I want to show some of the new features in Starlight Data Engineer, or SDE. This replaces our XML Engineering Environment product and uses the same underlying architecture. 
but we've added some new features to make it SDE, and we'll be adding a lot more in the future. One of the new features that our users have asked for is the ability to repeatedly run a processor directly within the application, rather than using the service, though we still support running processors from the service. However, by using the new run modes in SDE, you can make any processor run continuously, on a specified interval, or at a specified time of day directly from the workbench. To demonstrate this, I'll simulate a system that receives continuous updates and skim the most recent information using SDE. First, I'll start a script that populates a database with fictitious network intrusion detection system messages. For the network savvy among you, this script creates fictitious alerts using random source and destination IP addresses from two subnets, random source ports, and one of a few well-known destination ports. It also includes a timestamp and a warning level that's usually one, sometimes two, and rarely three, representing the most severe warnings. Now that I have data being loaded into the database, I'll switch back to SDE. Here I have a simple processor that queries the database, which is running SQLite in this case, and asks for the last one minute of data. It loads it directly into a Starlight Workgroup server. We'll talk about improvements to the ODBC module a little later, but for now what I'll do is tell SDE to run this processor every 60 seconds. To do this, I click on the lower part of the Start Processor button, and select Interval. I'll enter 60 seconds and click OK. SDE will run the processor immediately and then every 60 seconds thereafter. It starts the timer as soon as I hit OK and then resets it each time it starts the processor. This way I know for certain that a processor runs on the same interval, regardless of how long it takes to finish running each time. You can see that it's loaded the first batch of data into the Starlight Workgroup server. So now I'll go over to Viz and load this data into a project. Now that we have some records, let's build a network view of the data, and then we'll make an encoding based on the warning level. Since we don't have too much data yet, the graph is relatively uninteresting, but by now more data has been loaded into the server, so let's grab it and see how things change. As you can see, the view has turned yellow in the project tree, so we need to rebuild it. All the new data is showing up gray because it wasn't included in the color encoding, so I'll need to refresh that data as well. Now you can see which connections have been marked at each of the three warning levels. Before we leave this data, I want to quickly highlight another feature that we've implemented in 413, Stereo 3D. If you have 3D goggles or another stereoscopic 3D display, you can view Viz views directly in stereo by clicking the Stereo 3D button. If your device natively supports stereo through OpenGL, you can use that option. Otherwise, you can select from one of the many options shown here. You can also configure some of the stereo parameters as needed. Let's see how this looks with the network view we've just built. Since we're not currently using a stereographic display, I've chosen the split screen mode that works with certain goggles, or by just crossing your eyes.